Story, humiliated her over a plate of food years later, life gives him the worst lesson of all. In Caracas, Venezuela, there lived a very, very humble family. Jorge, the head of the family, worked selling garbage bags. Ana, the mother, accompanied him, cleaning car windows, trying to collect some money to help them get food for the day. With what they earned, there were days when everyone ate, and others when luck wasn't on their side, sometimes, there was barely enough for a glass of sugarcane broth for the children. Luisa, who was nine years old, and Camilo, who was seven, lived like this, day by day, trying to survive. Due to Jorge and Ana's lack of education, they couldn't aspire to positions in a company. Every time Jorge tried for a better job, even if he managed to get an interview, he'd get rejected because of his academic level only having completed the third year of elementary school. They wouldn't even let him through the door because he didn't have nice clothes, unfortunately, for some people, appearances mattered more than who they truly were inside. But, despite everything, they were happy because they had each other. Jorge, though penniless, fought every day to bring some food, even if it was just a piece of bread, for the kids. They never went to bed with empty stomachs, even though Ana and Jorge often went without eating anything all day. Ana made sure to keep the house clean, even though it was made of sticks and zinc sheets, it always stayed clean because that was something Ana's mother emphasized, that a person can be poor but clean. One day, like any other, Ana, Jorge, Luisa, and Camilo were directed to Afro, where they sold bags and cleaned windows. A man driving drunk mounted the platform where this family was working, and when Jorge realized the truck was about to run them over, he pushed the children to avoid the impact. Unfortunately, the truck ran over Jorge and Ana, and thanks to Jorge's reaction, Luisa and Camilo survived. Luisa, at just nine years old, had to take care of her younger brother, Camilo, because the man driving the truck, upon realizing what he had done, sped away and was never heard from again. It was due to his irresponsibility that left Luisa an orphan with Camilo. Thanks to the example their parents had set, one of perseverance and persistence, Luisa got up every day, took her younger brother's hand, and went out to ask for something to eat because she was very clear about one thing, neither he nor she nor her younger brother would die of hunger. One day, she was carrying a bag of sweets that a very kind lady had given her to sell so they could get any coins for food. She reached the door of a very beautiful and large house with a big garden, there was a man playing with his son, who was no older than ten. Camilo and Luisa watched them play and remembered their father, Jorge, who at that moment was watching over them from heaven. After a long while, Luisa approached the door of this house and shouted, Sir. Hi. Would you like to buy a sweet for your son? The man, named Orlando, replied, No, thank you, we don't want any. Luisa, insisting because it was getting dark, and they had nothing, said, Sir, what if it's not about sweets? Do you have something to eat for me and my brother? Look, we're hungry because we haven't sold anything, and it's almost night. And the truth is, we're very hungry. Orlando was a very arrogant person and believed that people asking for money or living on the streets were all drug addicts, and what they asked for was to consume prohibited substances. He responded to this hungry girl, I have no food to give, and if this life touched you, it's not my problem. Now leave through the door, you're scaring my son. Go ask for something to eat from your parents. Luisa, saddened by how this man treated them like animals and when he mentioned her parents so disdainfully, replied, Sir, it shouldn't be like this. If I ask, it's because we're very hungry. And believe me, if my parents were alive, the rest of us wouldn't be asking for food. With tears in their eyes, sad and hungry, they left that place. Luisa's words didn't move Orlando, who didn't even turn to look at Luisa when she shouted that to him, it meant nothing to him. That night was the first one this pair of angels spent without eating anything at all. Time passed, Luisa became a young woman who, though poor, tried to take good care of herself, with the vanity that every young person her age has. At 15, she tried to maintain her clothes, although old and patched up, always clean, like her brother Camillo, because, as her mother used to say, we might be poor, but clean point one day, when she arrived at a big house to sell her sweets, an elderly lady came out. How can I help? The old lady asked them. Ma'am, hello, would you like to buy a sweet? The old lady inquired. Girl, why are you selling sweets? Shouldn't you be in school? Luisa replied, No, ma'am, I live only with my brother, and this is how we manage to get food, by selling my sweets. The elderly lady was moved and continued talking to them, even inviting them to have a bowl of soup. 
Seeing the sincerity in the girl, she said, wouldn't you like to work with me? This house is too big for just me. Besides, I need a helping hand with household chores. And you, young man, wouldn't you like to help me with lawn mowing and shopping? I propose you come and live with me. I'll provide food, a place to sleep, and some money for you to live well, Luisa looked at Camillo, who had a smile on his face, and asked, what do you think, little brother? And Camillo didn't hesitate for a moment and said, of course, I want to work here. Time passed, Luisa assisted Mrs. Rosa, or Rosetta, as Camillo and Luisa called her. In return, she helped Luisa study at night. Luisa, now 20 years old, a young woman, still took care of Rosetta, alongside Camillo. He completed elementary and high school, one day he was going to enroll in university because Rosetta told him she wanted to help and would pay for his university education, so they could make something of themselves. They had dedicated a lot to taking care of Rosetta's house. Luisa was just a little over three blocks away from the office when a traffic accident occurred. A car collided and overturned, and a young man was unconscious. With her inherent desire to help anyone in need, she went to the accident site, dragged the person out of the car, and called an ambulance. When the paramedics arrived and took the man to the hospital, Luisa went with him to a company and check on him. In the ambulance, she looked at the man whose face seemed familiar to her. She started analyzing and thinking about who it could be, and she remembered the man who once treated her poorly as a child, recalling her parents in an unpleasant way. Yes, folks, I'm talking about Orlando, that despicable person who mistreated that girl and who, at that moment, saved her life. A week went by, and Luisa continued visiting the hospital to check on Orlando. When she came to visit him, Orlando, who was conscious, asked, were you the one who helped me in the accident? She replied, yes, sir, I was the one who saved you. Orlando thanked her, and Luisa said, sir, do you think I was right to help you? Of course, Orlando replied, it's important to help people. Do you believe in that, sir? Luisa asked him. Of course, I do, he said. Then why, when I was little and hungry, did you treat me like a stray dog and not help me and my brother? I thank you because I do have feelings and didn't let you die in that accident, as you deserved. With permission, she turned away and left the hospital. Orlando remembered that event and began to cry. Do you think Luisa should have brought up that event? Or should she have remained silent? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for visiting, and if you like the video, please like and share it with your friends. Until next time.